Hey, it's Joe Glines from the Automator, and you're about to watch a video here where uh, we were on a call, Isaiah and I were on a call with Hellbent from Civ Reborn channel, and we were just kind of chatting, and I said, you know what, let me hit record in case we cover some interesting stuff, and wow, we covered a lot of really fascinating, interesting things, yeah, dealing with messages, with hexadecimal, with bit shifting, just a lot of other stuff, reading Windows documentation, controls, I mean, a, a lot of really uh, geeky stuff, so it's a bit higher level stuff. But it's, it's great stuff because it's really hard to learn this stuff just by reading the forum. So I hope you enjoy this. Um, I'm going to put both of their channel links up above. So you can, uh, if you're not a current subscriber to their channels, you should check them out. Great stuff. And hope you enjoy it. And hopefully we're going to be doing more of these videos. So please comment if you liked the video. If you, you know, if you want us to do more of them, please comment. And uh, I'm trying to get like other people like Tank and Geek Dude and stuff just to get on calls and talk about this kind of stuff. So I'd love your feedback. Thanks. So basically what I would do is I would uh, create a hotkey that would be F1, for example, which has a message what's true or whatever. Now what I'm going to do is use the hotkey command to F1 off. I have never tried this. Like I yeah, know me that. Me neither. Me neither. Right. So I have always used the hotkey and I actually use it even. But the thing. The thing that, that might make it work is because the hotkey is a label, right? So even it though it has the two colons, it's still just a right. label. So let me run it. F1 would actually use that, right? So mm -hmm. that's that works. But if I go ahead and do this, F1 should not bring in. Oh, yeah, it works. Actually, you just gave me a That's a very good idea. So basically, we could have a um, an option, probably a... a and that's the thing, Joe. I would have kind of like a like a menu or something. I don't know how we would do but it. Actually, but no. Wait, how would how would it actually inter interact with the actual script, though? You'd have to add it to the script. Yeah. But that's what I don't like is adding stuff that people aren't aware of how to deal with it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Let me see because no, I do not believe that you have to add it to the script. Why would I have to add it to the script? Well, because it's it's like... Oh, or you mean like... Uh, but here's the deal. Probably, I could send that message to the script. Mm. Because basically, what is going on is, whenever you use the hotkey command, it is actually executing a function that sends that message to that script. It is not... So probably, if there is a way, I would send the message to disable that hotkey for that script. Mm -hmm. I don't have to actually even re reload the script or anything like that. Now, that goes into territory that I would have to read a little bit about it because I've never done that. But I am, I am fairly idea. certain that that's the best. It, it, that would be basically, that's what we do oh, with hey, the... Is that yes? Would you... Yeah. Th let's just keep going down this path, right? Let's say we exit out of the hotkey string helper. That should actually go back and flip everything the way it normally is, right? I mean, that's what I think what we would want to do. We could do that. Like, um, whenever I disable a hotkey, um, when I remember exit, it. So, well, there's two ways. I could, when I exit the script, it would reload all the other scripts. Oh, that might sure. Be one option. Okay. Yep. That, that might be one option. Or yep. for me not to reload, I could have a, uh, an object that stores every time I like to push every time I uh, send one of those messages, push it into the object. And later on at the end of the script, just pop every single one of them and just do the reverse of it. Because so, see, you guys agree, right? Kind of like a history. It wouldn't be good to exit out of our script and then not revert back the original one to its normal functionality because then it'd be confusing. Like, well, wait a minute. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah. Now, no, that's a really case, like, idea. Yeah. yeah, I like the idea, actually. <laughs> that's the reason why we, we, we should actually talk right. uh, to people who, who, who yeah. aren't, like, invested on the script. Like, they, how would you use it? And then he right away said, like, something like, okay. Yeah. Well, you know what they say, necessity is the mother of invention, right? So if you don't have <laughs> yeah. a need to do something, then it's like, oh, I got to invent it from what? <laughs> Yeah, that's true. And we build um, stuff that's useful for us, and you know how useful it is for everyone else. It's hard to say. The more people, I actually think that's the that's the most that's the most uh, 
uh, interesting thing about this is that, um, what does that mean? Handler already said, I don't get it. Um, how, how would it will help other people? As he said, like, I'm not a hockey person. But still, that's what he thought about. Like, how would I disable something, right? <laughs> um, yeah. That is good, actually. Let me see something. In this other script, and we have this, this list, and in this list, we could pause. You see this? Whenever we do the pause here, mm -hmm. you remember, how, uh, um, Joe, that what we do is actually we send a message. So that is a menu choice, I think. Um, oh, right. I do recall that. Yes. So, so, so what we do is that this is the, these are the messages and for suspend or pause and this suspend is suspend the hot keys. All so of this them. message goes oh. ahead. Yeah, exactly. So this message suspends all the hot keys, but probably there might be some way for me to send a message I and specify it. which hot key I could. So I don't, I'm not really sure, but I think that is possible. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. This other one is our hub where that way, if you have a lot of scripts running, you can go to one script and, you know, edit, fix, edit, reload, exit, you know, any of them. Yeah. So it just gives you a list of the running scripts. And for example, if you want to edit it, pause it, suspend it, exit. Now, the funny thing is, and you would ask, like, what would I need that? Now, for example, you see that one here that says mm -hmm. code? That is one of the scripts that I was running a few seconds ago, which was testing something. So that was run from here, you see? And sometimes the scripts might not have a task icon or a tray icon, yeah. but mm -hmm. they are still running, and you have no access to them. So basically this script would give you a list of all the running scripts, even if they don't have a, a tray icon or a GUI or a taskbar icon, you can still see them here. That's, that's helpful. Right, so now here you could actually exit them if you don't have access to them, edit them, reload them, and even open the script folder. So <laughs> you would see where they are located and so on. Um, but yeah, you know, those, those little scripts are the ones that I create for, for Joe. Like he asked me what he wants to do and we go ahead and do it. <laughs> That's good. Um, let's see. And then show, so right when you joined, how about we were talking about, he's adding, you know, like the default hotkey and that the hotkey control doesn't, you can't, what is it? Windows and apps key you said it can't detect. Right. So in this case, this is what Joe was talking about that you work a little bit with. Um, uh, how do you say this? Custom like, uh, the custom, custom controls, right? Now, mm -hmm. I was just uh, talking about the fact that, for example, uh, we have this control right here, which is a hard key control, but it doesn't capture the window key or the app. Yeah. Well, so it's pretty... Of, I see uh, what I've done recently is started to do a lot of stuff with like layered windows, right? And yes. Windows eight in Windows eight, you can embed a control. It's invisible, right? But you can interact with it still on Windows eight and higher. Okay. So yeah. I, in one of my last projects, I have this invisible, this invisible uh, um, hotkey control, right? But then I have uh, GDIP drawings on top of it that. It reads what it says and then just translates it and copies it as as text. Right. Oh, right. So yeah, what, yeah. 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 So one of the things that these things um, you, you you if you dig into this is that's just a, basically an edit control that yeah, when you is. type into it when you yes. type into it it changes the the text on it. So you exactly. can use yes. you can use just an edit control. Yes. Exactly. So basically, um, basically what this thing is doing is that uh, whenever you press the control key, like Whenever you press it, it grabs that and it sets the text for this control to be control plus. And, mm -hmm. and this is very easy to do. For example, you see this edit control right here? Mm -hmm. um, I have it so that I can capture the escape key and it does something. So when I hit the escape key, it goes ahead and clears the text from the control and does something on the list. Do you, do you mind showing me how you, do, how you did that? Yeah, of like course. In your code? Yeah, that's, that's oh, not there's a So basically, 
<laughs> no, I, I'm just curious, like, because I, I do, I, I capture keys, like, like actually reading. I only usually look for very specific keys. I haven't gone into down the rabbit hole of um, like how to record key strokes and everything like that. So if no, I'm looking no. for a very specific key, I usually just use get key state. But I oh no, 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 how... no, no, that's that's not the best. Um, I, I, at least in my opinion, that's not mm -hmm. the best a solution for dealing with controls and grabbing keys that wouldn't be the best yeah but, see mine might right. have always been like just like oh was i holding shift when i pressed that button not only that the problem is that the get key state is very independent of which control actually triggered it that's the main issue that i have with it now here uh, the on message function here um zero x 100 is WM button down. This is a message that all windows get whenever you press a button and it actually tells you what button it was, right? So I just set the on message function to call this function every time it, it, a, a button is pressed. Now, the funny thing about that is that when I uh, have here my, my, my control, uh, sorry, my, my function, the HWMD, there's one of the parameters that is the handle of the control that actually sent the message. And that's what I, uh, that's the reason why I told you that that might not be the best solution for you. Because in your case, the get key state does not have knowledge of which handle actually sent the message. In this case, the on message bot, uh, function does have the handle. And I would just say, like, if the handle is the one from the search term, term handle, which is the edit control, mm -hmm. um, I would do something. Hold, hold, hold. Can I pause you for a second? Yes. To clarify? Okay, so you said that message, the 0x100, is for pressing a button down. So that would... Is is an edit control button? I don't remember. I understand. I understand your confusion. So let, let me just go ahead and open it up from here. So edit control and then... Um, well, this window spy should tell me the same thing, right? Yeah, it, well, there, you should get two, two messages, one for button down and one for button up. So though, whenever you press a key, you get two, two uh, messages. One for button hey, down. You, so so, so I'm, now, thinking, I'm thinking the class, the class, right? Um, like a, a group box is a button. Uh, a button is a button. A edit control is an edit. Uh, right. Now, now, now let, me, let, me, let me show you this. So when you go to the, to the uh, uh, documentation from Windows, you will see that this thing has a lot of messages that is EM. So that is an edit message, right? Uh -huh. And that message is only sent by the edit control, right? Okay. But even though this control only send those, there are some messages that are like common to all controls or most controls. And one of them is the, um, for example, the WM command. This is a window message. The WM is window message. Mm -hmm. And the command is one of those messages that is common, not only to the uh, other controls, but also to the edit control. And one of those messages that is also for them is the WM button down and WM button up. So the okay. edit control also sends those messages, even though it is specifically a window message. That's why it is WMS, WM, right? Okay, okay. So okay. so basically it does send it, but it is a, a, a window message, not an edit control message. Now, okay. Um, okay. on the one hand, I have the handle number, right? So that tells yeah. me the edit control handle specifically. So I could have many edit controls with different handles, and I could know exactly which one of them actually sent that key, and I could ignore all the others. So that's one of the reasons why I like this. And second of all- Usually, usually I use, uh, for that kind of thing, I usually use uh, an array and where the index is the handle. Yeah, so you have to do kind of like, a, like a, 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 an object that you have to handle that yourself. But in here, I yes. do not have yes. to handle memory yeah. for any reason. I just get the handle passed to me, and I just check if it is the one that I'm interested in. If it is not, I just ignore it or do something else, right? Yeah. yeah. So on for me, hand, for me, it's like I use I use the way that I was describing. If I have like if I want to, if I have like a dozen, two dozen controls, 
right? right. When I click on the control, I just get the handle and then that's, it tells me everything about that control. Exactly. So, so, so basically, right. uh, yes. And then this is the funny thing. Not only do you have the handle, but you also have in WPRM. I don't even know how to use that. I don't, I've seen, I've seen like, I, I, I put that into a tool tip before and it's supposed to be like the X and Y position or something, but. Oh yeah. No the thing is, uh, yeah, because that is usually the X and Y positions uh, in whatever message you're getting, they're together in one number. So you get kind but of. Like I don't a, know. I don't know how to read it because, like, it the, the number changes so quickly. Like, there's it's not. It can't be just be like uh, x x with the beside it the y. It's something. There's something else with it. Like um, so, so. Let's say it's a six digit number, right? The first yes. three digits aren't the x position. The no, the they're not. Position, and, so, yeah. 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 So, so basically, that, that, that's one of the issues. You're looking at a decimal number but it's really not a decimal number. What you have to be working with is the hexadecimal value. And that gives you something that if you do the shift, uh, bit shift, yeah, that's words. when you get the correct X and Y position numbers. Yeah. It, 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 is, it is a little bit advanced. I know where you are. And I, I could tell you more or less what, um, how that would work, but in a different, maybe when you have a little bit more time, because it is a little okay. bit more in the, no, in this I, case, you know, you know what it is? It's that when I first started out with this stuff, right. Uh -huh. I didn't, I didn't know like all the parameters and everything like that. So no. I just, I just made up my own ways of doing things. So everything that I do is <laughs> yeah. my own way of doing things. <laughs> I, I understand exactly where you're at. I, I, I did that exact same thing when I was, when I was doing the videos at that time, that's exactly what I was doing. Just like creating my own stuff. Like I didn't know what to do. Um, and then now I'm conforming more to what's the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. So it is like, um, even though I don't like it sometimes, but now I understand what they're doing and why. And that bit shift kind of thing is completely difficult to understand. But once you get it, you understand the benefits of it. So you have your own version of it, and it is cool, but it is, I, I could tell you it's more complicated. Let's, let's yeah. plan, uh, Isaiah, for some time. We'll, re we'll do a video on the whole bit shift and um, yeah. the, uh, the, what is it, the, the location return or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 so with, yeah. okay, well, can I, can I, okay before you continue. So that position, is it always related to the, the client area of the control it clicks or is it is it change depending on which message you use? Now, hold on, uh, it changed completely depending on which message what sent. So in this case, for example, this uh, rectangle here, EM set rectangle, that's a message that is sent by the edit control and it has a specific formatting, okay? okay. So if you are on a different control and they sent you a message that has to do with the rectangle, you would have to see the message itself to see how it is set up. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I, so, I, think so I, got I think I understand what you mean. Message is kind of like its own. You have to read the documentation for it. So sometimes, sometimes it'll be related to the client area of the window. Other times yeah, it'll be related to the to, yes, client area of the to. control. Yeah, okay. in that case, whenever you see a message like that, just go ahead and read on the, the documentation on it and you will get more information because they 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 they, uh, they change very often and there's a lot of things that make no sense whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've never I've never gone through this documentation. I'm sorry? I've never gone through this doc never seen this documentation before. Oh my oh my god. No, so if I so you're dealing with messages without knowing the documentation for that? I don't. I don't use messages because there's nothing in auto hotkey documentation about them. There's like a couple of, there's like, I don't know, 50 messages uh, that it displays and it doesn't say anything about uh, what they do. Right, right. So basically, if you go to window messages. List of window messages. Well, right, I so usually Google this is, it. I this is what, it. yeah. So this is, this is what yeah. I started, right? Yeah. And this that's, is just that's, that's a, like a very used. small this is a very, very small sample. That's all I've ever used. Yeah. Pretty much but anything that's outside of the auto hotkey documentation, I don't touch. Now, you will notice that all of them start with WM. Those are the WM, um, those are the window messages, and yep. they are kind of like, uh, as I mentioned before, kind of like common to most of controls. So most of most controls, they would have a WM cut and WM paste, right? And copy paste like this. 
Mm -hmm. But beside that one, they also send their own copy paste. So copy. Let me see. Uh, hold on. Yeah. Copy and paste. I, I remember. I don't know if the notification is in here. It's, it's not. It's not important right yet. It's not. Yeah, but but basically there are like, even though it's an edit control, it sends its own copy and its own paste. Oh, it's okay. not the same as the WM. It sends them both. Oh, it sends the window message and it sends its own, right? And you can use either or. It's gonna be the same. But in any case, going back to do you where have, we were, okay, do you have a, do you have a good not okay? I'll ask you one quick question about that. Go back to that page again. Yep. Do you have do you have those pretty much well memorized what these things do? No, not at all. Okay, well what's the one what's the one for exiting the GUI? Like if I move my mouse off the GUI, what's that message? Because I was looking That for would it. be focus, still focus here. Uh that's that. Okay, because I was looking at if you go if you go down a little bit, there's like uh -huh. leave. Exit. Oh no, 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 no. I was that's like, different. I was like, because I've gone through, I, I've I've had it before. Like I've, I've made a script before where it, it checks them for mouse move, mouse on, leave, and, mouse yeah. over, and this again. Uh, these are messages that are very general, and probably if you're targeting a specific control, you would need the message that that control sends, not the window message. Because then you will not be able to track it correctly. Now, well, if you want to track, I, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, if you want to track specifically, um, again, focus and kill focus is when you click outside of the window. But if you okay. just want to know when the mouse came out, yeah, yeah it would be mouse. I leave. tried that. It didn't. It, I, I had a script the other day where I was. If I move my mouse onto it, it um, sets the transparency to fully opaque. And if I move my mouse off of it, it turns it off. So what I, I, I tried those, none of them seemed to work. So I ended up just setting, as soon as I put my mouse on it, it starts a timer and it waits for the handle to change. Okay, yeah, oh, you know what? And this is the funny thing. Um, depend, I think it depends a lot on the fact that when you make a window transparent, your mouse is not over that window anymore. It's very complicated. The fact that it is transparent makes uh, no, no, no. The, the the part that makes it opaque works. That's so it's it's transparent. As soon as my mouse goes over it, it makes it opaque. But after right? that, it doesn't. But then when I try to leave, when I tried that, when I tried using that mouse leave, like it did nothing. Like I usually I I set it up like on message, blah blah blah, sent okay. it to a function, and then I was like, I put a tooltip in the message, and it was like no tooltip, no tooltip, okay. and I was like, I could swear I've used this before. I okay, swear I, 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 I swear it should work. And now um, that those are the type of things, you know, Joe, how we have been dealing with this edit control that does not fill up when you read the file. Like the, there are some weird bugs going around. Don't, don't worry, it can happen, but I would like to test it. Like that's one of the things that if you can send the, the code to Joe and we could take a look at it later on, maybe we could see it because that's one of those kind of things that I like to figure out. Um, because you don't never know when you're going to get that issue. Okay, now before before I interrupted with the question there, uh, you were going about the EM, um, your, when you're buttoned down in your... Yeah, so, so basically I was... Let me go ahead and this is a different script here. So what I was going on is that I, I'm just capturing the message whenever you press a button. But mm -hmm. the funny thing about capturing the method this way is that we get the handle of the control that actually sent the message. And the WPRAM contains which key was pressed. So with an if statement, I know that it is exactly the control that I want, and I can ignore everything else. And oh, with so, a, so if so hold on. So if, if you used your if you clicked your mouse in it, it'll say L button. If you clicked uh, H, it would say H. Actually, if I click the mouse, this is never is not gonna work because this button down, I think it is uh, hold on. Uh, yeah, I think it is different because okay, L so button, that, that, that makes them that's L that makes button. Sense. Okay, okay. Yeah, so L button. Yeah, so this is a different message. So there is a button up here, L button up and L button down. So this is this is the message that gets sent when you click. 
Not okay, so the other you... one, the other one is just any. It's for other keyboard. Button. It's just for the keyboard, right? Uh, for for uh, keyboard and other buttons that are not okay. mouse related. Okay, that's where my confusion was. Like, hmm. That's... Yeah. No, in this case, it would be just for keyboard buttons. Okay. And the funny thing is, the W so program. I, you, you know what? My first impression was is like. You know how when you press a button, right? When yes. You press like a GUI button or yeah. a, a text control or something like that, right? Oh, that's no, what no. I was. Yeah, that's I what I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. You okay. were thinking that WM button uh, down was when you press a button, for example. Or, yes. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah no, okay. No, no, no. okay. So this it's is a actually the button. Do it's a yeah. Keyboard so button. Okay. the button okay. down is whenever you press keyboard button, and key a button up would be when you leave it when you. Um, release it. Now okay. here, the switch statement that I have here, and actually, Joe, this is when the switch statement yeah. makes perfect sense, That's right? right? Because, like, oh, yeah, you're just using switch. Right, so there is a switch, and I know that the W param is only going to contain a number. That's it. And for each case, case 13, I know that whenever it sends the 13, it is that I press the enter key, and whenever I press the, uh, whenever it's the 27, I press escape. So and that is very have, Yeah. And, and you see how I right away put a, a <laughs> how do yeah. I say, a, 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 a comment right there, because it would be so cryptic if you oh, see all these sure. numbers and you have no idea what the hell that is. But in general, if you, and this is just knowledge that you might want to do at any, you know, for any purpose, if you're capturing a function like this, um, I think I have to make it persistent. It doesn't have that, it did not work. And um, whenever you are uh, this, and um, let me just do something else. I don't know like this. Now, that, pivot, um, it should be the uh, search term. I like to put all my HW and D variables with a little dash in front so that I know that that is a handle, nothing else. Um, so whenever you have a key like that, let me show. There we go. So I just do a tool tip and I just want to see what the W prime is. Um, I have my edit control. If I press enter, it gives me 13. Escape would be 27. F1 would be 112. And actually, those numbers, they are, there is a list of them. I think those, those are the ANSI representations for them. Like the character, you could use the character function to see them. Mm -hmm. But basically, that's the way how I usually kind of like capture what the number is. I just capture the message and just set a tooltip for the WR, WRM. I know what the number is and I just create my cases and that's it. So for each of my cases, I perform very specific. Um, so what do you, what do you have it doing? What did, what did you have it doing before? So if it's the enter key. So here's the thing. If you are in uh, a search and I'm going to show you. Oh, this is so, a search. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The so search, I'm the making search. a search. If there is only one uh, item left, like that, in that situation, there's only one item left. And I'm typing, so my keyboard, I'm, I'm on my keyboard, and I hit enter, it would just open it and go to it. I created a script like that a while ago. Right, so it would just do that, it would just jump to it. Um, if you are, if you have other multiple stuff in it, and you hit the enter key, nothing happens. Oh, okay. Because I'm yeah. just making sure that it is only when there's only one left. Yeah. Now, um, on the other on the other control, if it is a different control, uh, like for example on the list view, if you have one selected in the list view and hit the enter key, it would actually open the, the one that you have selected. So if I click this one, it would just go to WTL. So it would it would actually go to the is to it, the one that you have selected. This is a little off yeah. topic, but you know how the other day we were talking about, I think it's the delete key that in, in those doesn't work the way we want it to, right? I'm sorry? 
isn't it the delete key that like you're typing and there's a, there's some sort of edit field where oh, control control yeah the control control backward yeah right, like control right. back so if you right. are That's typing cool. something yeah, hello, and you hit control back to right. delete the whole yes. word. It doesn't work. So, yes. so I could I could go ahead and do that. Yes, right. I could. For God, example, put that on our radar, man. <laughs> right. Yeah. So basically, so right now, if, yeah. If I if I could um, now the double param, um, whenever you press button down, if you capture the backspace, let me see. Hold on. This is the backspace. Here, eight, and I think I think eight. Um, hold on, eight control. Exactly. So when I get the backspace, so if the handle is and uh, the W param is eight, right? Um, the W param equals eight. Uh, get key state. This is the time where I would get the key state. Control. I want to make sure that if it is down, if get, I think, I forgot, I haven't used this function in so long. Um, it, it's, you can just use, you, for what you're control. doing, you can just do that, that's it. Right, that's and then if control, right? So uh, if yep. you're pressing the control, then you're gonna send um, control, so it is control shift, uh, control shift arrow left, I think, uh, left. So that, and then uh, you just delete, uh, delete. I think that should at least do something. Load this, and then control. You see that? So it did delete it, but it added this little square because the edit control, whenever you do that, it puts a square right there. <laughs> so, so, but in general, it is actually kind of like doing what I was expecting. It actually selects whatever there is and tries to do that. But the edit control is very annoying because it's so just that little can't, thing. There's, there should be a way for you to highlight everything and then send just to send a backspace. Yeah, that's exactly what I did right here. Oh, okay. But uh, the thing is that I did not want to select everything because uh, for example, just as, as the example that I was testing, uh, this is a test. I would only want to delete the word test, not okay. everything. So control delete only deletes that one word, which uh, is the normal behavior for it. The only so problem is that- just, would you, In this case, what would you do now? Would you just add an extra backspace to it? No, I would just- Or forward, um, forward and back? Or? No, the problem is um, actually adding a- con The problem is of that, that let me let me double check something because I have a. a See, I don't I don't know about I I don't I've never obviously I've never typed that that yeah into it before because I've never got I don't know what that square is I don't know what that square is. No, the square means that, that you put a character in there that the control cannot display. So basically, um, what is going on is that there's kind of like a little. You added a character there that the control cannot display, and it shows it as a box as a box, right? So mm -hmm. um, in any case, whenever you press control eight, uh, control backspace, so the, the control, uh -huh, so then after that, yeah, I see that. Let me try something. Um, It, and that's the thing. This character, my, my script did whatever I told it to do. But after my script did whatever I told it to do, the control actually added this particular box in it. And that's, I would have to find a way to prevent that, to prevent the, the, the edit control from sending that message. Like, um, and that's where you would search like uh, prevent edit control control the uh, backspace. Yeah, this is what I was like. <laughs> uh, that, that, yeah, oh, look at that. Uh, there's a hotkey <laughs> script for that. <laughs> Somebody already did it. Nice. Uh, yeah, so. Is it a good solution though? Let's see. So basically he's just hotkeying the control backspace uh -huh. and he's just making sure that if it is a, 
a specific class. Okay, so whenever that happens, uh, let's see what he does. He is sending, yeah, he's doing exactly what I'm doing right now. So control shift left, selects everything, backspace, it does that. And yeah, but the, the difference what is- what if, what, if you, what if you do it on like another line? Would that change anything? Like drop the backspace, like wait 10 no, seconds. No. Oh, well, yeah, if I wait a little bit, I think it would solve it, but that's not the best solution. Now, the reason why in his case it works is because he is preventing uh, the edit control from seeing the control backspace come out. That's what happens. Uh -huh. In my case here, in my case here, um, I'm not preventing the, hot, the, the edit control from seeing it. Mm -hmm. But if I mm -hmm. actually create a, a, a hotkey for it, yeah, about that, I, I've seen I've seen some things with send. Like I don't use send that often, but there's like raw and blind. Yeah, in this case, it it, it doesn't you don't need those because um, raw is whenever you're using the send command, and there are some things like for example the backspace. Um, so for example, send. Yeah, so raw would be like it just sends it as text. The text, like literally exactly send that. that. Yeah, yeah exactly. But what about That's... the blind? What does the blind do? That again, it is when you when you send the message, when you're sending the keystrokes, uh -huh. Arahat keeps waiting for an answer to make sure that it that that the uh, program received the keys. Oh, okay. I send the plan. It's yeah. not going to yeah. wait for that, but that's all. Okay. Okay. In this case, I think if I go ahead and do that, and I start typing, this is. It would do. You see, whatever we were. Oh, nice, nice. The reason for this is because now. I do not let the edit control see the control backspace because mm -hmm. auto hotkey is hijacking it, right? In, yeah. in what I was doing before, even though I am using it, but the edit control also sees the control backspace yeah. and it yeah. does whatever little square it does in there. So, but in general, yeah, those are the things why the on message in these kind of situations, um, especially what you were trying, like if you want to capture a specific key in a specific control, uh, it is better to go with the message, uh, the own message function and just do the, the cases for I'm whatever key. I'm definitely going to be using this one here. Definitely gonna be using this one. <laughs> yeah, that is very, that, those are very useful. And after you understand how it goes, and, and the, the funny thing is that then this is more reliable because the get key state is not as reliable in certain situations as a message like this. It is actually better for you to capture the message than to capture the state of the keyboard. Well, one of the things that I've been wanting to do is I, I've been wanting to get fully away. Do you, do you know how uh, DPI scaling doesn't really, like if you turn off DPI scaling with auto hotkey, it only turns it off partially? Oh, yeah. Well, DPI scaling is a very hot topic right there. Right. So one of the things I've been wanting to do is I'm actually just one control. Like I can make any control except for an edit control. So that's my next control that I'm going to try to make. It's just a very simple edit control that's fully, fully custom, 100% full, custom. But that oh, means yeah. I have to like, like insert where the carrot goes and how to highlight everything and like you would have to actually. It's a lot of work for that one. I am I am amazed that you are creating custom controls and you do not understand the basics of the messages. Like you didn't know that there was a, a, a um, the, the, this documentation for them because it would be extremely hard for you to understand everything that is going on in a control, right? Like for example, me that I know how this. I wouldn't touch a custom control. <laughs> <laughs> Not even by the life of me, because I know how difficult they are. Well, like, it's it's for me. I, I have this 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 like theory. Let's say uh -huh. um, it's it's. I have everything that I see on the screen is just pixels, right? There is no uh -huh. window. The window is a lie. The window is a lie. There's uh, his, a his, his matrix level, <laughs> right? No. He's in matrix level. Yeah, yeah. And this pixels, then yeah. I have triggers, and then I have yes. triggers. So yes. it's the triggers that that I, I that the to be the difficult part. But they're also easy too, because you just have to understand like, okay, if I click in this spot, well, then I can, I know where it clicked. I have that. Basically, position. basically you just described what a message is in a very uh, 
down, uh, like, like a down to earth kind of way. Like mm -hmm. it is a trigger. A message is just a notification for you to use it as a trigger for something else. Like yeah. whenever so you I click, described, yeah. I described everything as, as pixels, triggers and, triggers, and actions. Right. Pixels, and then triggers it, and actions. Right. Exactly. So basically you have in, in the word of, of Windows, it would be functions, which are your actions or macros in this case. Functions or macros is the same in this case. Those are your actions. You have messages, which are your triggers or notifications, okay? Which is when you tell something happened. So when the edit control, when you, when you for example, scroll down, every time you press your mouse uh, scroll, you scroll, you, you do it mm -hmm. down. There is a message that is being notified, like a notification that Actually, says- can I, can I show you something? Can I share my screen for a quick second? I'll yeah, show sure. you something. I'll show you something that exactly like, uh, I, I was doing something for somebody that, uh -huh. that has a bad wrist and he wants like a control system that uh, he didn't have to use his L button to interact with things. So let me see if I can see, I think I have, um, where is it? Well, then should I pause the recording in case we end up wanting to share all this? Or? No, no, no. It's, it's, it's fine. It's, I, when, I, when I make somebody something for somebody, I usually make sure that I have rights to share it. Okay. okay. Because There's I some the really good stuff we've covered. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. There's a, a little bit of uh, info nuggets in here, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and as it is, and I, oh my I, God, yeah. I know Hellbent has, uh, is it C sharp Hellbent that you used to program in? C, C. C, thank, I always oh get my. So yeah, so he so. has some background in programming, right? Compared to me, like I, I don't at all. So this thing here, if, if I go and just use my mouse wheel, I can interact with these controls. Okay. Right, so it's just a bunch, it's, it's a very simple control system. It's just a bunch of lists. And then I can switch tabs, right? So that's what I'm looking for. Like when I mouse over these guys, I know where I am and I know what I'm doing with it. Okay, so let, let me, let me, let me uh, tell you. So the mouse has, whenever you're using it, pointers and keyboards, um, everything you touch, which is a button, sends a notification to the system. It is, uh, called a message in this case. It would be called a message. Um, those messages, you can either capture them or you can actually impersonate them. That means that you can send the message to the yes. window and let it think that you actually clicked when you did it, okay? So in your case, whatever you're looking for is just to understand messages. Uh, I would suggest you, whenever you have a little bit more time, is actually understand window messages, because if you're creating your own controls, you have to understand messages. Like you really need to, because for well, you I to can, interact, it's, like I said, though my my ax, my access is through the auto hotkey documentation, and right, they don't really no, say but, anything. But 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 basically, um, let me let me uh, the 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 best idea for you is. MSDN has this whole thing called the Windows 32 API. Auto hotkey is built completely around the, auto, the Windows 32 API. Yes. Now this Windows 32 API has its own documentation. If you understand the Windows 32 API, you will be better at auto hotkey. It's gonna be way easier for you because you know what is going on, right? Now, the Windows 32 API is humongous you cannot read that like you can that's one of the problems like some with like even those messages in that small list like some of them are quite kind of descriptive of what it does others are like yes. i can't really tell what this does just by looking at it and, and then what i've encountered in the past with a lot of things is in order to understand one thing i also have to understand this other thing and in order to understand that other thing i have to understand this other thing and it yes. just becomes like where it's like a hole, yeah. right? And it's like, yeah, all I, I want to do is, I, I just, I don't want to spend my life doing, I just want to do this one thing. So I usually, <laughs> so, so that's how I started. I was like, 
you know what? I'm just gonna invent my own shit. I'm just yeah, gonna invent my own shit. man. Uh, you you have just described the pain of a pro of a professional coder. So especially whenever you're doing stuff that are in the boundaries of what this um, language can do, then you will find yourself reading more than you want what you want to. Yeah. Um, so out of hotkey, by the way. It is, it just does a few key things extremely well, like sending messages, um, creating hotkeys, and um, dealing with DLLs and COM objects. Those are the ones that our hotkey makes it easy for you. But as soon as you want to delve a little bit deeper, like sending messages to another window, and try to interact with Windows in very weird stuff, you will find that it is extremely complicated. It's not that easy. Now, in your case, what I would say is, the, the, let me let me show you my screen, and I think that would be, and actually, Joe, this is what we were talking about a, a, a while ago. If you learn how to navigate the Windows documentation yeah. here, right, and if you understand a little bit of what is going on, like you're good to go. Yeah, it opens up doors to everything. It, 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 it actually makes everything so much easier. Um, notifications by themselves, okay? So notifications, you just have to understand one thing about them. They are made up of um, three things, okay? Uh, uh, let me go ahead and the things that I changed the heart for this thing to be something else, see? So I have to fix that. Um, so notification is on message, you mean? Um, not exactly. On message is basically uh, a way to capture those notifications. But what I want you to know is that messages are divided in three things. The message number, which is usually a hexadecimal number, mm -hmm. and two parameters, param1 and param2. Usually that's it. Those are the three things that you need to understand and know very, like, like so long as you understand that, you know 90% of Windows because Windows is a bunch of messages. That's what it is. And actually, just as you said, like, uh, the only thing that I have is pixels, triggers, and actions. Mm -hmm. Well, you nail it down. It is pixels and messages. That's it. The messages, if you understand the messages, you can do whatever you want, that's it. So a message const it constitutes a number like this and two parameters. The two parameters are usually called W param. And what does the W stand for? L param. I, you know what, I have no clue. W param, I would say white parameter or something like that. I do not know, understand. I do not know what that is. Yeah, with the light. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. In this case, uh, but you will find them always whenever you go ahead and uh, open a message. WM. So EM, edit control message. Mm -hmm. This is the message. Get correct index. W param must be zero. L param must be zero. That's it. If you send that, per that message, uh, this message like this. If you so send that send message. Me send message or post message? Yeah, that's exactly right. So you yeah. could use send message or post message. Yeah. So if you use, oh, I don't know what is going on with my with the computer. Yeah. Apparently the W used to stand for word, but no longer is the case. But you know what hey, do word you want, is? Do you, mind, word? do you mind giving me three minutes to have a smoke? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, let, me, so, let me pause the recording here. Okay, so um, we were talking about the messages, right? So, and, and I was just telling you that you just have to understand that there's three parts to it, which is the message number, right? And the W param and the L param, right? Now, uh, the number here, usually what happens is each message has a name, okay? But that name 
It's is actually a, a variable. It's a variable, yeah. exactly. It is Contact, a constant yeah. variable that doesn't change. It's very highly unlikely that it changes. And when you go to the send and post messages, you see the message list in here, you will see that every single one of them has a number because that's what it is. Mm -hmm. It is just a number, right? So in, oh in, in our example, there's three things, one number here and two options at the side. And Windows is built around this whole thing. Everything okay. is sending messages to each other. It is just one number, and what are, are you supposed to do with that? Now, uh, you, uh, I don't know if it was you or Joe who asked what does W and L mean in yeah. these cases. And I was just going, uh, I, I was just guessing, and I was going to say like word and long. And those two things are sizes. So uh, whenever you start on computer information, you know that computers yeah, yeah. is just so one, like an integer one and, and uh, zero. Right. So that, that, that's what bits are. So that yeah. is a bit, right? Yeah. And when you have eight of those, right? Yeah, you have a byte, right. right? Now, before you get to kilobyte and megabyte and stuff like that, right? Before those guys, there was another convention. So eight bits would be a byte, but if you have two bytes, like one after the other, you would have 16 bits, right? So that is 16 bit, right? Yeah. And that would be what it is called a word. Okay, so that's care. So that's the same. So that's so the same. Yeah, that's exactly. You're 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 going to the same direction. So two bytes, sixteen bits, which is also a word, or it could be a character. It's the same, like a car. Yeah, the same right? size. Yeah, as a character. it's the same size, right? And then the integer is four bytes, and then you exactly got long. an integer. Exactly. So those Double. guys now. Now, exactly. So a double, which you call a double, is a double word or a D word. That's what it is. Okay. So a double word is basically exactly as you're expecting. It would be two times word, which would be two times 16. That would be 32 bits. Okay. So 32 bits is a D word. And basically, it's the same as a long word. Whenever you are talking about a long, it's the same as a 32 bit. So this is 16 bit. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And what is going on then? And so it's specifically, a, it's it's also specifically that it knows that it's it's supposed these are going to be characters rather than, um, because other words, because the, the the word would just be a, would be an integer. That's the size of an integer. Right. So well, not well exactly. But the problem here is, as computers were low in memory at that time and when this message system was created at that time. Um, the only thing that it was a number that you're passing and the parameter, which was 16 bits. But then later on, you wanted to pass more data. So now I allowed you to pass not only a one parameter so that not your, your old scripts or old programs didn't break, right? But now you have another parameter that you could pass more data to. Okay. So that data now actually holds uh, 32 bits but now all of that is completely irrelevant, okay? When the computers started using 32 bits processors, like by default, those two parameters are 32 bits, both of them. And now that the, the computers are 64 bit, those two parameters are 64 bit, both of them. So now the W and L, they mean nothing in this case. They, they okay, are it's just, just... It's just the convention. The old yeah, convention. it's just stays like that. It, yeah, okay. it, it could be only named like param1 and param2. It's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so okay, that, that would you. be the same thing, right? I got you. Now, the, the, the reason for this is if you store 16 bits on a long, what is going to happen is that you're going to have something like this. And this is the reason why I was telling you, you would have to understand hexadecimals. I um, do, you have I do. 16 bits, and then you would have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then the, that's the, the first part, the first 16 bits, right? And then the other 16 bits is going to be zero. That's what is going to happen. And for that reason, it doesn't matter if you pass 16 bits or, or 32 bits, the computer will understand what to do with it because 
the part that you're not using is empty. It's going to be zeros. That's all. So it's just going to ignore that. And it's going to work as a 16-bit anyways. You see what I mean? Yeah. So, 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 so now, whenever you're doing bit shifting, which is what we were talking about, so two, four, six. Well, when I, I said, like I said, I worked with C, right? And with C, what we would have to do is if we were like, if I want to create an interface or use the command window to, huh? let's say, have an input. So let's say I want to say press A to do this, right? Then I would have to, with it, I would have to actually check if it was lowercase or uppercase so I could do a shift. I could shift it by 32, and that would give me my uppercase. Right. Uh, well, almost there. It is, it is almost the same concept, but not exactly. In the shift that you're doing, you're shifting a character to another, like a lowercase a shifted to a uppercase uh, character. And in the, in the alphabet, they are lined up one after the other. So A, B, C, up to Z. And yeah, right and next to the Z. The uppercase, the uppercase yeah, is like 36 or 32. Exactly. So, so basically, yeah. that's what is going to happen. So as they are lined up in, in order like that, if you shift the A, 32 positions, you're going to end up in the uppercase A. Yeah. The idea, the basic idea you're getting, it, but when you're doing bit shifting, is something a little bit uh, different in the sense that, as I mentioned before, say for example that you have this, a lot of ones on the 16 bit, on the first order, on the first word of the variable. And after that, you have a lot of zeros. If I want to put this guy, this, um, these ones to the second part of it, I would have to shift it to the right. I would have to put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now the other part gets deleted. And now I just bit shifted everything to the right. You see what I mean? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I know the stuff. I know the stuff, yeah. Ah, uh, okay, I know. perfect. So, 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 yeah. so, so in that case, in this okay. case, what happens is that if you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Two things, like the first part of the number tells you the X position and the second part of the number tells you the Y position, you would have to do some big shifting. The first part would be very easy. So that would be like um, mm. X. Uh, so this is gonna be my variable, my position variable, which contains those numbers. And X would be position and I would shift it to well, I don't have to shift it. I just have to know the, first. the parts on the right. So I just need the first part of it, right? And if I want the Y position, I would have to bit shift that to the left uh, by 32 or by 16. That's what I'm doing. Just I'm just going to shift everything, and that is going to be converted into this, which that is going to be saved to my Y. And now I have the position on my Y. Right, that's and so those much numbers simpler are gonna... than what I expected. Yeah, that's not rocket science. <laughs> it is not rocket science. It is not. It is not that difficult. That's a great the, the job explaining is, that. Yeah. Right. So, so the problem is that some people uh, find it very complicated because actually you're working with bits. And my explanation might be completely wrong because I'm showing you everything in hexadecimals. Yeah. But we're talking about bits, zeros and ones. So the bit shifting that is going on in here, I'm representing it like this so that you have a better idea of yeah. what is going on. But that's not exactly what is going on. It's just zeros and ones moving to the side. And um, basically, as usually, soon usually as you when get... I try to just usually when I try to describe this to somebody, I usually use four zeros with like one of them as a one, and then I can shift it over one. Like four zeros, like this. Like get rid of the X, get rid of just yeah, exactly. Now change one of them to a one. One of them to one like this. Yeah. All right. Now, now, how would you shift that, and what would I, it mean? So what? Okay. Like, yeah. So so let's, 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 let's talk are. about. Yeah. So let's do this. You have this position, and you want to move it to the right. Uh, oh, and basically, again, that's the reason why it gets confusing. Like, what if are the is, meaning? What are the meanings of those zeros, though? Like. That, okay. So this is this is the this is the funny thing. If you're talking binary, the first number here. It's going to be one. If you want to represent the one, it's going to be like that. And if you want to represent two, it would be this. So basically, you just moved from one to two in binary. 
And the only thing that I did is that I shifted the bit. The one, I shifted left. You see that? Mm -hmm. And what happens is whenever you're doing bit shifting, you're just telling how many bytes you're going to move to the right. If I move to, if I move position to two, it would do this. So it was in a one, and I'm going to move it one, two, and the other parts are going to be zeros. So that's what I just did. So the binary is, is it works the same way as the the base ten system, but it only has values zeros one and zero. ones exactly right. And so zeros. the first position is zero or one. The second position is zero or two. The third position is zero or four, and the last exactly. one is zero or eight. Exactly, exactly. And basically, what you're doing is that um, when I'm bit shifting to the left, for example, in this example, and I just had a one, right? That's okay, but for example, if I had 11 like this, and I bit shift two, I would do two, and that would be two zeros. You see how the number actually moved to the right completely, right? So, you mean basically- You from a value of three to a value of 12. Right, exactly. So I just changed the number completely. And, and you have to take that into consideration when you're doing bit shifting. And, and basically, Bit shifting is not that hard to understand visually. Mm -hmm. The problem comes when you have these kind of things. Like I have two parameters, and the and basically uh, the 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 um, that tells you here the return value is a zero based index value of the position of the correct. Okay, so that's a number. Okay, but sometimes the return are two values concatenated in one in bits. And it's gonna tell you like this number, you're gonna get a number like this. So that's like two, four, six, eight. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Two, four, six, eight. That's the number that you got, okay? So that's what you got. And now it is telling you that the first eight characters, two, four, six, eight, those eight represent a number that is the X position and the other numbers represent number that is the Y position. Now you just have to convert that to decimal. And actually you just do that. You just have a number and that position, you just look at it like if you message box, that's it, you would get the, the, the can, decimal can you, number. Can you put up a, a small GUI with the with the message two hundred? So and then put a tooltip to see that parameter. Two hundred. What is the two hundred? Yeah, that is the two hundred or two hundred and one. Two hundred or two hundred and one. That's a WM message, right? Yeah. That is so it's, so like do, do on message on message. Uh, right. Um, I'm gonna do that. No, Sorry. no, no. It's it's the the move one or yeah, whatever. Whichever one of those works. It doesn't matter which one of those. That would be the two hundred. Uh, just so we can see what the, the number it shows us in a tooltip. Okay. Now, the first thing you have to do is this. You have the mouse move. I would go to the documentation here, Win32 API, and search mouse move. And then you get the information of... Ah, uh, there it is. So the parameter, the X and Y are okay, both in the parameter. same number, right? So this is the funny thing. So we have, use the get X param and get Y L param macros to unpack the coordinates from L param. So that's the thing. You are getting on the L parameter of that thing, you're getting a number, but that number is not something that you would actually uh, directly, if yeah. you cannot read it. You cannot read it directly. Right. So let's go ahead and get this. So we have. Oh no, we get this guy here um, on message. And let me go back to my thing. Return and it has to be persistent. No, 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 you need a GUI. All right. Sure. This GUI show 200 by 200. Just GUI show 200 by 200. Okay. 
the integer system to be younger. Now, uh, the test function, which will have the what was it, L param, L param, message, and handle. Those are the four things that you get. Now, let's go ahead and do it. Here. And he, they said that it is the L param that gets that, okay? So this is the funny thing. You have to be careful with that because... Um, you still have to decipher that. Yeah. Right. So, so, so Interpret. the W param is going to be empty. That's the funny thing. So W param in this case, and that's the reason why you have to read all the documentation on that message because you get something else. Look that um, yeah, yeah. W param is zero. Now, this number that you're getting you cannot see it as a decimal number. That is not a decimal thing, okay? What you need to do with that is actually unpack it. Now, the, the first part would be, um, let me get, and this is the part that I don't remember that much for the X position, but I know that for the Y position, I just have to use L cram bit shift 16, I think it is, and probably, um, this one, if I, like I seen it the other day, it was like zero X, F, 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 F. Right, so that is to blank it. So what you're doing is, and, so I'm just blanking. I'm just adding them together. And I just okay, wanted yeah. to show me the first 16 digits of it, okay? Now, let me see, two, four, six, eight. I don't know if that's how it goes. How many of them? See, I think it is this is where I don't understand because th those aren't, that couldn't be a hexadecimal number anymore then. Because that would be, that would be a huge number. F, 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 F is a huge number. Oh, but I'm not adding F, 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 X to it. I'm just adding them together. This is bitwise operation. So what happens is if you have two numbers, like um, say this, and you have this, and you do the and yes, operand, yes, yes. right? If so I, what you're doing in here, so, the and operand, what it's gonna do is that only if both are one, then I'm gonna get a one. In any other case, I'm gonna get a zero. That's what is going on. So that's when I do this and no, operand. No, 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 that that's would be I'm the opposite. Doing. Wouldn't it be the opposite? No, the and is both together. The, oh, the yeah, and yeah, yes, and, 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 yes, and, right. and, so, yes, 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 yes. So that, in this case, you have the or operand. I was, I was thinking adding, or. I was thinking adding. I was, no, no, I was no, 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 but it is the and. And in this yeah. case, it, it will only be one when both of them are one, right? Yeah. So yeah. in this case, I'm doing an and, and this is effectively a lot of ones, basically. Just tell, yeah. and it would just tell it to just show me the ones that are one. That's, that's it. That's the only thing that I need. Yeah. So if the number is something like that, it is just going to return whatever is uh, one in that number. So that is going to just simply return the number that is on the lower end of it. The only problem is that I don't know how many of them there are, like uh, six or eight, right? I think that's... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know how much it is, but in this case, when I do this, you will get some numbers, some interesting numbers now. So now let me tooltip them instead. Um, yeah, tooltip would be better. Right. Um, so this would be the X position and Y position. And that is not, I don't think that is gonna work right now because the numbers are not correct. But now you're noticing that it is not giving me the same number as it was before, right? So let me, let me show you just in contrast to, um, the uh, L prime, oh, right. Yeah. right. So this is the original number. These two are the ones that I'm actually kind of bit shifting. Now, I think it's gonna be eight. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's just go ahead and try that. First it's eight. Um, and that might be something like this, which is a word. So this is the size of a word. I think that's, yeah, let me try that. Now, notice that the 62 is actually working fine. You see mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. And that is actually closer to the zero. You see that? And moving back, that would be closer to 200. 200. You, see, right. you see that? So that is actually working fine. And this, I just have to figure out the, the exact number that I have to shift. Now, um, I the word is four bits. So word is, so hold on. No, no, word is, 
Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. See, uh, you're, you're trying to understand it. I just be putting in a number and hitting run. <laughs> uh, exactly. No, no, no. I, I'm trying to understand it because basically, yeah. it doesn't. For me, it doesn't make sense to shift four bits to the right. So it should be more than that. Let me see 32 because this is a 64 bit computer, but I don't think so. Now I was sure that it would be um, 16. Let me see if I'm shifting it. Now would that? Would, okay, so that would matter then. Ah, so I would have yeah, to check. Yeah, let me see. Let me see. I got it. I got it. I got it. Yeah. I would have I to was check shifting, my pointer size. I was shifting it in the wrong direction. That's what oh, it's going okay, to happen. Okay. So okay. basically, you see, if I'm shifting to this size, it is grabbing memory. Again, and this is the funny thing. The reason why I got confused is because you know that visually you are talking, say, for example, and we have this example. Now, I have this example in which I shifted to the left, right? Mm -hmm. So when you shift to the left, you yeah. just do like this, right? This is what I said that it was. That's visually what is happening. But the, the thing in here is actually doing the opposite of it because the computer has the numbers stored in its memory in a very specific orientation. So visually for me, that's what it means because in, in numbers, whenever you have numbers, the last digit number is the, is the least significant. Yeah. So a six is lower than this one. This one actually means a thousand right now. And that's the same in bit numbering. So if I have this number, that that one in here means a higher number than one that is to the to the right, right? So, but in a computer, it's the other way around. It is it is it is flipped. So this number in the computer is uh, like this, and now the least significant bit is here on the right. So what I'm trying to do, what I was trying to do, it was correct but in the wrong direction. So I was trying to shift it in the wrong direction. Now, when I shift 16 bits to the, to the right in this case, now I get my, uh, the Y position closer to 200 at the bottom and 200 to the right. So as you can see, this is what is called bit shifting, okay? And, and basically- And the first one is bitwise. Sorry? All of those are big one. It is what they are called bitwise operands, okay? And you have the and, the or, the not, and you have shifting to the right and shifting to the left. Whenever you understand those guys, you are closer to computer god than you realize. Actually, you know what, Joe? Uh, when we were talking about, the, uh, when you sent me the video from Python, that these guys, well, not yeah. Python, it was that they were, those guys were trying to solve something. Yeah. This is yeah, exactly, yeah. they were actually exactly doing bitwise operands on that search. And that's why it was so fast. So if yeah. you understand bitwise operands, you are you're doing very advanced stuff and it is very good. Now, well, that was the stuff that I had to do because the, in my college course, it was for an engineering course. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> I yeah, did, so, this is the stuff that I did. Yeah. Now, and in this case, uh, the L param, whenever you have a parameter that contains two values at the same time, like how they explained here, it says that the lowest... 16 bits of L param contains the X coordinate and the next 16 bits contain the Y coordinate. That is that the whole number is a combination of those two things. Yeah. That means automatically that you have to do some bit shifting to get the information. Or in any case, they have these macros here. That is a message that you can send that it does that for you, okay? So that's all. You could actually use them um, but I have not used this and I don't know how that works. That is actually probably only on, uh, windows programming, like in C programming, okay. C sharp. Yeah. So yeah. they have those macros that do, do that for them. Yeah. But in our hotkey, you are left to manually just shift the parameters around. And that's actually yeah, I, very, I remember, I remember learning like defines and macros. I'm sorry. Defines and macros. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So in that case, 
when they're referring to macros in there, that's what they mean. Um, in this case, if you, for any reason, do this in the opposite way, like for example, you, for the X position you shifted and for the other one you shifted, what is gonna happen is that now the numbers are gonna be reversed. Yeah. Right, so that's, that's all there is to it, and, but it is gonna continue working. It's not going to be a problem. It's not going to be that big of a problem. You know? So even if I do the one that says Y position, it's actually giving me the X position because the right number on the right. And now notice that the numbers on the on the on the on the L param does not do not change that much, even though I'm no, actually but they, like if if see I, I remember hearing before something. Like I was, I heard that the L param contained the coordinates and I'm looking at the coordinates like there's no way, like when I move the mouse a tiny bit, that number going up big, that number is going up. Yeah, but, but that's what is going on. So basically now you understand what is happening. It's just that when they say that the L param contains both, it is just okay. that. See, I never, I never even looked at like that stuff before. In never, binary, right? in, in, in actually in binary is where they are. So mm -hmm. both of them are binary numbers contained in one parameter. So that's what it's called. So yeah, my, my experience with the messages was that, that page, that page with like a hundred messages on it. Mm -hmm. No, but basically I will tell you, so any, any message that you run across or you see, or especially from here, if you see an example or something like that, just grab the yeah, message, just, just go to the documentation, Windows documentation page. <coughs> <laughs> and, and, and basically you have to make sure if you go to microsoft.com uh, and this is something that people might miss it uh, I would go directly to where it says docs.microsoft.com directly like that docs.microsoft.com and then go to the page that says documentation that's where you have to be now you search the documentation it is going to search for it and it, it is going to tell you like WMAP message you okay now that you have a message, now you have to understand, you will see exactly what it does. And you see, like the, the W param indicates if a virtual key is down or not. What is the so, virtual key? Like the control key, the shift key, the X button. Look at that, the X buttons on the mouse. Um, if you are pressing two buttons at the same time, that's what it means. So the L param would contain some information about other buttons. Oh, okay. I got I, so when we had it before, it was zero. But if you're holding another key, it'll be something else. Right, but we're not looking at the same message, okay? Oh, okay. Because, you because, you no, 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 no. So here, okay. here we are in mouse move, okay. but this one is actually L button up, okay. and that's the and that's the key away the key information that I want you to take away from here. No, I thought, I thought you looked up. I thought you looked up. Uh, yeah, I, I couldn't. I didn't. I didn't read the what the message was. No, no, but, but, but that's it. the but that's the idea. So the, the the key information that you have to take away from this is that each message works differently. So each message right. you have to go ahead and go. Which ahead is why it's so important, right? Right. You have to look for it, and the W param is going to give you some information. Some of them is not going to give you more than that, or you know. You know what that reminded me now, of. With Isaias was uh, oh, how you were explaining before, like DLL calls. Well, it depends what language you know the DLL call is referencing. You got to go follow <laughs> it up and and read because it, it there is no consistency, right? Like you gotta. Right. There, there is absolutely no consistency whatsoever. whatsoever. And Sorry. that is the thing. How about what were you going to say? So, no. Um, that was it? I was going to say something about like send message and post message. I don't remember, I don't, I, say I, have, I only have one. I only have one that I've ever sent and one that I, well, actually I've probably sent a couple, but they were probably copy and pasted. But one that I use all the time, it's it's uh, uh, the message to move up, that I'm moving a window. So uh -huh. zero, zero X A1 dash two. Uh-huh. That is that yes. is for moving the, the window itself. Yeah, Yeah. so I, I don't remember if I've seen other messages where I actually need to specify uh, what data type I'm using? Not exactly. No, 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 no. Uh, you you don't have to specify any of that. Messages. Okay, so that's, only, that's only for DLL call. That's only for DLL. Call. Yeah, that is for DLL calls. Now here's the deal. Uh, messages, the window messages, and the other thing, Joe, that that um, 
uh, Tank was talking about, which is DDE, I think. Oh, yeah. Those systems, correct. So those systems are designed to allow different programs to communicate with each other without having to know in which language that program was written. So these messages have nothing to do about the size of the character or if it is an int or if it is a, doesn't have anything to do with that. Um, libraries, on the other hand, which is a DLL, is something that is compiled in a specific language. So you have to understand the language to know how to use that DLL, okay? So that's totally different. Um, in that case, that's the reason why you were asking, like, um, in that uh, DLL, I had to specify if it was a type of variable, if it is an int, if it is a long, if it is a pointer. That is on DLL calls. On, on messages, you don't have to do that at all, ever. Cool. Look at that. There is a message for whenever you press a hot key. Just, oh, you, can, you can find so much interesting thing about here that, um, actually, look at that. Maybe the, the clear command is the one that we should send. Hmm. Yeah, I'll send it. I'll check on that. Um, but I, I like the fact that you're working on, on, um, on personalized controls. Um, you know what? I do not have much experience with GDI. Um, and that is actually uh, like the lowest level that you can go in programming. Like you can create a control from scratch by using the GDI library. Now, let, let, me, let me clarify something here. Uh, I used the library that somebody else wrote to work with AutoHotKey. No, no, so I I'm understand. Not, I don't know. I'm not actually working with, like, there's, there's a bunch, I've seen a bunch of people that they know, like, all the functions, they know all the DLL calls and how to construct a no, actual no, no, function no, no, no. out of them. I just use the functions that somebody else created. No, no, but again, that is still amazing because that library is huge, okay? So, so long that you have actually found a way to create a control using the GDI library, that's a lot. That's a long, long, it's, it's more impressive than what you think. I'm just drawing stuff. <laughs> That's the cool thing. Yeah, I'm just creating. I'm just creating programs. <laughs> now, uh, when you compare like, that to somebody who doesn't and, do it, and I've like, only been oh, using man. it for like two years because it, it's a pain in the ass to uh, create like a the graphics. Like it's it's function call after function call after function call, and and like change like oh I want to move the position of this by one pixel. Let me run it again and check. So I created <laughs> environment. I created an environment so I can do that in real time. And oh, then wow. I export, I export. So I draw in, like I have an environment that's like MS Paint. So I can uh -huh, create it. Yeah. And then I can export it as code. Wow, yeah, that, that's actually amazing. That's actually good. Uh, so and that, Joe, that control I would, that, I, that system yeah. that I showed earlier, that yeah. is done. I create a prototype in my editor and then I export the code. And then with the code, I just pass it a bunch of variables so that way it updates every time it draws. So this That's will amazing. be changed. That is actually extremely amazing. That is actually worth of you, Joe, doing an interview and stuff. That, that is- we have, we have done it. We have That's done right. It. I was going to say, we, we recorded one before because that was where I think I mentioned it to you, Isaiah, is that, that he had some stuff where he was yeah. buying the text, but it was, you know, the, the, the text was actually like on top of it was not part of the control, but it was still text. It was, it was pretty yes. cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Actually, I, 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 I uh, this is one part of GUIs that I haven't actually delved into because I'm more into um, converting functions into something that you can use on screen. <laughs> that's what I do. Mm -hmm. Just grab a function and convert it into something that somebody can use it very quickly. Um, but yeah, after you understand how messages work, how things go, you saw how I right away said, yeah, like, you, know, you know what, that you, what you showed me today was very helpful and uh, I think I'll start incorporating it more. Yeah, just 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 go ahead and read a little bit more because that opens up a lot of doors. A lot of doors, I can tell you, for real. Cool, all right, well, I'm gonna, let's stop the recording, but thanks uh, both of you guys, that was pretty awesome. Welcome. Hey, if you just watched that video and you felt it was a bit over your head, 
I would recommend reach out to us at joe at theautomator.com and we offer consulting services where we will help educate you and work with you to level you up. To me, it's best ways that you can start learning auto hockey and make really significant jumps is having someone assess where you are and then kind of nudge you a little bit higher and higher um, and get your code worked on by someone who's been doing it for a long time.